We are joined by Sedemir Nestorovich, professor of geopolitics at Essex Business School at Asia Pacific. Professor, thank you very much for joining us. Firstly, let's start with how crucial this moment is. I mean, could this hostage tragedy be a turning point in efforts to secure a ceasefire? Good morning. Uh, I do believe that it is. Uh, it can be a turning point because it is a, a the day when we have uh, the highest number of hostages uh, killed, and uh, in uh, the public opinion in Israel, but also the public opinion worldwide, is uh, frantically looking for a uh, ceasefire and frantically looking for the end of this conflict. I want to get your read into this momentum we are seeing in the streets in Israel. Uh, could they potentially undermine Netanyahu's hold on power? I don't think so, because Netanyahu has proved that he doesn't care about uh, the number of people who are going to the streets, even if this is one of the biggest strikes in the uh, in the history of Israel. The country has practically been put to a halt, but I don't think that he is going to stop. He has, for him, a clear agenda, and uh, he will not deviate from that. Uh, Professor, to your point, Netanyahu on Monday indeed brushed aside pleas for an immediate ceasefire. But, you know, the pressure is mounting. There's the local anger that we just talked about. Joe Biden, meantime, saying BB not doing enough. And there's this very, well, relatively new one, I should say, the UK suspending some arms exports to Israel. I mean, we know it's not a significant uh, exporter, only accounting for 1%. But symbolically, how important or how significant is this hardening of Keir Starmer's position? Could it open the door for further sanctions and other allies to follow suit? Because my understanding is sometimes someone has to be the first. You're absolutely right. It seems that the uh, wind is turning. And um, uh, the point is that we have uh, several governments, such as the United States and the UK, uh, if they are really... Uh, annoyed by uh, uh, Netanyahu's behavior, they may come up with their own plan. And they can say, OK, we'll negotiate directly with Hamas and we will put on a table a plan that would be take it or leave it. And in that case, uh, Israel has to make a decision. Uh, will they continue to have uh, uh, arms or help coming from the Western countries, namely the United States? Or will they say, no, we don't care about that and we'll pursue our own actions? So there is a possibility that uh, especially the Americans come out with a uh, take it or leave it plan because we still have a certain number of American hostages uh, within the hands of Hamas. And the prime responsibility of Biden as the president of the U.S. is to protect uh, his own citizens. Mm. And Professor uh, Netanyahu seems defiant. Um, how do you expect the ceasefire talks would unfold? Which side of the court is the ball currently on, do you think? So for the moment, uh, the, um, uh, there is a blow uh, against Netanyahu, but it is not the first time that he has this kind of situations. And uh, very often in the past, uh, he even provoked a certain number of situations, such as uh, uh, killing people in uh, Iran, killing people in uh, uh, in Lebanon. So maybe he will come up with uh, another trick in order to uh, withdraw the attention uh, from the situation concerning uh, the hostages and to pursue his own plan because he is really con con he is really convinced that the only way how to stop. Uh, the escalation or how to stop the war is to eliminate Hamas. But I cannot see how he can eliminate Hamas in, in, a, in this uh, present situation. Professor Nestorovich, you know, some observers were saying that uh, Hamas's position will harden once Yahya Sinwa, you know, uh, takes over. Uh, do you see evidence of that? I mean, we're hearing statements like, uh, you know, more will return in coffins if Israel tries to free them militarily. Has there been a change in Hamas's position in the sense that it's now rolling the dice and making a calculated move uh, and, and, and calculating that, you know, the optics, I mean, it looks bad everywhere you look at it, killing hostages. Uh, the same can be said, of course, of the civilians and people who have died in Gaza. But is there a change uh, as far as you, you see things? So there are two things here. 
The first one is that he is uh, definitely a uh, harder player than the previous uh, Hamas negotiators. And on the second fight, it is also maybe a negotiation tactic, meaning uh, he is playing hard in order to get the best from the ceasefire and for the exchange of prisoners, because the ceasefire is one thing, but there is also the exchange of prisoners, that is the Palestinian prisoners, that he is willing to exchange for the hostages. So I do believe that he is playing on both sides. He is harder, definitely. But on the other hand, he is also using it as a negotiation tactic. Understood. Professor, we do have to go. Thank you very much for your uh, time this morning. Sadimir Nestorovic is Thank professor of geopolitics at the ESSEC Business School, Asia Pacific.